All right. Good morning, everyone. This is uh, Hayes. We're back. We're back. I don't know what this video is going to be about. I think it's going to be about a mobile mechanic. You know, what a mobile mechanic, what a mobile mechanic is, you know. What's the difference between a shop mechanic and a mobile mechanic? I don't know. I'm just making a video today. So, uh, Ace is over there doing his PP thing before we go to work. Uh, probably going to drop him off at the vet, to be honest with you. Because he's, he's feeling kind of bad. Uh... I think it's constipation, but I want to be sure, so I'm gonna think I'm gonna drop them off. We got a lot to do today, so uh, this is gonna be uh, pretty much unedited video today. It's one of those the unedited video days. Hey, let's go, post in the truck. Let's go. Uh, let Ace finish up what he's doing. All right, without any further ado, any further ado, let's get the hell out of here. Let's go pick up parts and do all that kind of good stuff. Ace, let's go. Yeah, I just moved out of my house. So we're gonna be here for another week or two uh, until I find me another house. And uh, yeah, so anyways, it's all good. It's all good. It's actually... Oh, he's pooping. Yeah. Oh, he's got a good poop, too. <laughs> there you go. Good boy, Ace. I was worried about that because he wasn't pooping a lot in the past week. That was actually a good poop. Come on, Ace. Let's go. Good job, boy. All right, let's get it. Excited about poop. Let's go, boy. Let's get to it, guys. You guys are coming along too. It's gonna to be a good day. Oh, in the truck. All right, guys. I mean, let's, all right, people, let's do it. All right, let's go. Gotta clean my windshield. Order of business is get your parts together. If you already know what your schedule is going to be today, and I usually know what my schedule is going to be like uh, the night prior to today, so I knew what I was doing last night. That's why I do my schedule between 6 p.m. and 9 p.m. For one thing, uh, when it gets that late in the evening and you, they call me for scheduling, they're serious. They're not going to cancel on you. More than likely, if they if they schedule at 6 to 9 p.m., which that's how I've kind of trained people to do with me, if you want me to work on it, is what I'm saying. So, uh, <coughs> so yeah, uh, what was I saying? Uh, so get your parts together first, and that's what we're doing this morning. Uh, we also have an axle in the back of my truck. It's one of those Toyota Camrys. Where they have that uh, care that bearing, that carrier, that the axle goes through, and uh, so it's jammed up in there. So I'm gonna heat it up, or I'll drop it off somewhere that has a press, and I'll press it out for me. I can go and get that job done too. Uh, we got a brake job to do today. We have a, uh, a leaking hose, maybe, or a overheating problem. We have an overheating problem to look at. We got a lot going on today, so let's just do a little bit. We're not going to do any full videos on how to do a brake job or nothing like that. We're just gonna we're just gonna have a day. We're doing a mobile a mobile mechanic day today. Talk a little bit of stuff, you know, stuff like that. So let me wake up first before I start with this spiel, and uh, we'll get to it. get this brake job done first guys let's go ahead and get the easy shit done first and then we'll do a condenser on a 2014 uh, uh, Sierra uh, and then we'll finish up some axles on a Toyota Camry today let's do that first 
Hello, it says. Hello, it says. Yeah, I hear you fine. Say it again. Uh, maybe tomorrow. Depends on what you got. My day's okay, half filled up for tomorrow already. What do you got going on? I think I talked to you before. An 06 uh, Expedition Spark Plug and call back. You need to get it checked out first is what we talked about. Check it out first. Find the problem and then do the work. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. We can probably get you in... Uh, Man, we better call that one the day after tomorrow. Because okay. it's a Ford. <laughs> it's a Ford, and anything can happen on that expedition. Uh, like breaking spark plugs and things like that. I'd rather have a little extra time on that one. So, uh, yeah, let's, let's do that uh, Wednesday morning. Wednesday morning. Early morning. I mean, late morning. You text me uh, over the. You text me over your name and your address already. Uh, no, not yet. When you, as soon not as you do you that, I'll put you on my. I'll pin you on my schedule for Wednesday. All right. All right, then. All right. Thanks, buddy. All right. And that's basically how I do my scheduling. I don't. Uh, when people call me up there you're not gonna call me and say hey hey put on this and put on that you know I, I need a tune-up and you're gonna tell me what's going on are you having problems with it I mean is your car running funny uh, I want to know these things just don't expect me to put a tune-up you know I'm crossing my fingers it's a tune-up no we're not doing that at the next light turn left I'm not doing that I'm here to try to save you so let me do that and uh, that's probably one of the reasons that I stay pretty busy now too because because I do that some people don't like it don't get some people do not like me not doing what they say and I don't care this is the way I'm gonna do it uh, and I'll tell you why I do that, because for so many years that I've been noticing that people do that and they're spending hundreds and hundreds of, they're spending hundreds and hundreds of dollars before I get there on other mechanics. And uh, then when I get to the job, they've already spent all my money. <laughs> I say my money, but you know what I mean. They already spent so much money and then they're trying to Jew me down. And uh, I had to stop that. You know, I'm gonna get my money. I'm gonna get my money. Uh, because I work too hard out here and I'm saving people all the time. So, yeah, I'll put an end to that. So now we get diagnostics done. And if you don't want a diagnostic, call somebody else. But most people these days, they wait on me. So I guess they got the point after all these years. And they got, they got tired of spending that money. So anyways, let's get to this brake job and knock this brake job out first. She says her foot, she said her pedal's going all the way to the floor. So uh, let's do it. And while we get done with that one, we can run around to Pearl. We can get some acetylene. Uh, gas and then I get to then I'll have it in my truck at least at least I have a you know full tank of oxygen and acetylene uh, so when I get this bearing uh, pressed out or I'll just heat it up and pop it out of there and that way I'll have it when I need it you know for that job and other jobs so yeah I think our truck is out here in the park somewhere so we'll have to find it should be around this curve it's a nice little outfield right over here or a baseball field this whole area is beautiful
is right over there. Your customer says she's in a parking lot somewhere, just a little tip. You want to tell them to pin you a location, not the address, pin you a location. Go to Google Maps and pin a location of where your vehicle is. That way you don't have to search the entire parking lot when there's bunches of cars. Excuse me. Hello, it's Hayes. Hello. Yes, Good sir. Day. Yes, sir. Okay, glad to have you on the phone. My name is Tony. I'm calling from RPI. I so inform you that due to some regulation changes in the state of Mississippi, you are no longer responsible to pay for credit card processing fees. I was wondering, are you located at 4838 Woodmont Drive? All right, man. Thanks for calling. It's crazy shit. Can't stand these sales calls. Can't stand them. How would you even want a job like that? How could, how would you even want a job like that? <laughs> Anyways, here's the vehicle right here. Hey, we found it. There it is. So let's find out what's going on. She said she left her key in the uh, gas tank. <coughs> so what I think I'm gonna do is I am going to pull up to the side. This is another, uh, Thing that the mobile techs I do is I go ahead and get my my uh, my truck situated with the truck that I'm gonna do and I'm gonna work on the front of the vehicle so Ace you gotta stay in the truck for a little bit I'll let you out in a minute uh, but yeah I'll park it like this and I'll park that truck behind my truck and get the front end of that truck because she says it's on the front so we'll park that right over here so I'll be close to my toolbox. That is key when you're a mobile tech. You get your vehicle close to your vehicle uh, by the tools because you don't want to run, walk back and forth, back and forth. And there's the key right there. So we'll get the key out of there. I buy all the parts too, which makes life a lot easier. I don't have to bother, you know, I know she's gonna pay the bill. All my customers pay the bill. Uh, so I don't worry, and I just bought, man, that was freaking $500 in parts. Because what I did, what I did is what I bought everything. If there's a more than one option, let's say it's a, a 13 millimeter stud or a 12 millimeter stud, and I don't know what she has because I haven't seen the vehicle yet, I buy both of them. I buy both 12. <laughs> rotors for the 12s and both for the 14s and if there's two different kind of brake pads I buy them both and that when I get to the job I don't have to do no ripping and running back and forth to the parts store that will kill your day that will kill your day and that's why it's important to save some money yeah the pedal is going to the floor that's why it's important to uh, to save money save money uh if in the very beginning when you don't have a lot of money if you don't have a lot of money let me put it that way just put five ten dollars a percentage of what you made that day uh in a little jar somewhere and you save that do not touch it don't touch it and in four or five months you'll have enough money to buy your own parts and you'll start making money on the parts you buy you'll start getting discounts always use the same parts store I know I told you that I said that before always use the same parts store if you can use the same salesman at the parts store and build a rapport with your salesman at the parts store that's even better all right uh, you try to get a salesman that's been there a while that knows the stuff because you don't want to get a rookie salesman and they're giving you wrong parts and you're getting pissed off and you're getting the wrong parts and <coughs> you don't want to do all that. So get you a good salesman, a good parts guy. There's some birds over there. Check them out. All right. Oh yeah, that's going to the floor, baby. All right, let's check it out, guys. I check his brake fluid completely empty next thing I do is you crawl underneath the vehicle 
just a little short thing and you look for leakage and there's leakage right there so she probably popped out a brake pad and there's fluid everywhere but right there on the tires was probably a caliper or a bad hose it's probably a caliper she probably popped out it got so low and grinding and the pad just popped out and the piston popped out of the caliper all right popped out piston grind it up uh rotor we're replacing everything uh caliper one caliper the rotor the pads both sides and uh, we'll get to the next one there's no shade around here you see that so it's best you get this kind of stuff done in the morning time before the heat hits you parked keys back where they belong and uh test drove wheels are tight always wheels are tight every time hey get out of my seat please can you please get out of my seat oh the box is in the way really all right thanks for the licky lickies now go over there go get in your seat get in your seat let's go boy <laughs> let's go you gotta go i'm hungry you know you want some chicken don't you? All right, guys, we got a couple more to do. I'm gonna grab this water and we out. See, this is where I'm at today. Yeah, it's nice out here, huh? Soccer fields, baseball, softball, whatever. Let's get to the next one. All right, guys, our next adventure is a 2014 GMC Sierra. Let me show you where I'm at. We're downtown Jackson, Mississippi right now. Yeah, we're way up this parking garage. All right, so anyways. All right, so on these Sierras, the common problem on these Sierras is what I've researched is a leaking condenser. So if you have this truck, you might want to look you might want to look right up in there let me get my light so you can see so you can see what's normally leaking you'll see that little wet spot right there where that little uh, connector looks like a washer in there it connects them together you see that wetness okay let me put you right here for a second and we'll get the uh, my sniffer on it. And there's the leak right there. Okay, and that's where they normally, my research has told me that that's normally where these, where these Chevy trucks are leaking. And it's a pretty common problem. So something to remember, 2014, 15, uh, GMC Sierra Silverado So we're gonna go ahead and get that done. I don't think I'm gonna do a step-by-step -step on this one. I mean, I guess I could I don't know. Let's, let's go ahead and do it. I may or may not use it. Let's get it done We're gonna take off all our little Clips all the way around this plastic shield. Once you do that You'll be able to get it off Side ace, watch it. Make sure no one tries to take it. All right, good boy. All right, so what else we got going on here? The condenser is right in here. So let's see if we can remove. I don't know what are we going to remove. What are we going to remove? Hmm. Let's take this off. This piece right there there's a bolt right here there's a bolt a radiator hold down clamp right there we'll take those off we're not going to take the radiator out we're just going to push it to the side we're not going to lose any antifreeze or anything we'll take that one off as well uh let's go ahead and get the snorkel air tube out of the way all right let's get this out of the way too Okay, what do we got now? 
we can go ahead and take uh, let's go ahead and take these bolts off right here there should be two on each side so we can get a little bit of movement in that radiator Let's get this air box out of the way. I'm gonna show you why. You got two bolts underneath this frame. All right. So let me feel them. Yep. Yep. Two bolts under there. So I'm gonna get my 10 millimeter. My toolbox is destroyed, y'all. 10 millimeter ratcheting wrench is what I'm gonna use. Oops. I'm gonna have to take off this uh, bolt right here and put it over to the side. Put it over to the side. All bolts that you take off on this side, put them over here. All bolts you take on the other side, put them on that side. That's how I do it. Just loosen this side up a little bit so you can swing it out of the way. I think there's another bolt in here. Yep, and there it is. Because it wasn't giving me any movement. So there's three bolts per side. They could have gave us a little bit more room. Just a little bit. A half an inch would be nice. So you could just zip these three six bolts out. Boom, boom, boom. Get done. No, they wanna they wanna do that to us, huh? Alright. Let's see how Chevy is. <laughs> they wanna do stuff like that. That's alright, it's all good. We're gonna get it. And hopefully we can do this uh you know, in a good time because I still have another job to get to today. It shouldn't be that bad. It doesn't look that bad, actually. Windshield washer reservoir tank. You're going to have to take that one 10 millimeter bolt off. Just kind of push it back a little bit so you can get your wrench in there and take that last bolt out. Yeah, you're going to have to do that. All right, three bolts out. We got one 13 millimeter over here. 13 millimeter right there in the center. Let's get that off. We should be able to pull that thing right out of there. Okay, don't give me no problem, just come on out of there. I figures it'd give me some problems. It'd give me some problems. It's all right. You little heifer, you're gonna get out of there. You're gonna get out of there. There you go. There you go, ta-da. All right, three pieces, four pieces. Okay, good. So now we can move this radiator around. We can take this piece off. It covers the, uh, the condenser, the part of the radiator. So let's pull that off. It just came right off, no clips or anything on that. Okay, so now we can start taking off lines Let's take off these uh, transmission cooling lines. Let's take off the transmission cooling lines. And they will be right here. 
So you just pop those off and you'll see a clip. If you look closely, there's a clip in there. Just gently pull it out with a pick and just grab it. Don't lose it and uh, safe, put it in a safe location. Let me come around this side, pull the cap off and do the same thing to this side. Let's do it. I'm a firm believer in not fighting things, okay? So if you look down here and you'll see the clip so if you can't, it doesn't give you a good angle. Let's say this piece is way on the bottom and you really can't get it to pop that clip out of there. By all means, man, grab your wrench, man. Stick it on there and spin it in a location where you can get it. And that's what I ended up doing on this one. And now you'll see that little edge of the, of the ring right here. You can grab it. Just kind of poke it out until you see it pop out of the groove and stick your pick in there and just pull it out like that I gotta put the camera down but try and don't lose it because they will fly they will fly so I'm gonna try not to lose this one myself and try it's kind of trying to get away from me uh, and there we have it and that's what it looks like I'm just gonna set that right there let's go get the other side same thing flips out you just simply just pull on these hoses and they should come out mm. kind of wiggle and pop it out there's gonna be a little bit of drippage coming out of that it's not like it's filled up with transmission fluid all right it's on the top of the condenser so you'll probably have a couple drips come out of that that's it so let's pull the other side off that side's off already see didn't really drip a lot that's all you that's all the drippage i got so we're gonna go do the other side right now just kind of wiggle up and down and pull out you can get you you can get you a drip pan if you like and just get you know just catch the couple drops that are coming out it's fine too i don't care <laughs> so uh anyways that looks good it looks like we have to separate all right there's a 10 millimeter down there uh and there's a, another i think it's a 13 it looks like a 13 on the manifold where those two hoses go into the condenser. There's a 13 there. 10 millimeter on the bracket itself that holds those lines. And on this side, there is nothing. So that's it. Let's go get those lines out. Let's go get those, uh, those lines off. All right, it looks like there's a clip right there. You just push the tab in, and it unlocks the, uh, it unlocks it. So let's see if I can use the other hand and pull up on the condenser, and it might unlock. Let's see. Uh, yeah, that, that worked. Let's get the other side. There's another clip on the other side, I'm sure. Yep, right there, right there. So just push that tab in, push in on it, and this part will come up out of it. Let me see if I can do it on camera. Ah. Yep. All right, guys. That was not too bad. Not too bad. Let's see if I can get it out now. All right. I come out like this, this side first, because you got these right here. And I'll show you the leak. Set it down. Okay, now apparently, so if your AC is leaking, 
this would probably be the first spot I'd look. Right there. This one was leaking right there. I'm told that, yeah, it might have been leaking right there too, but I got most of my leak coming out of that corner right there. So yeah, check that first for leakage. All right, and if you got some leaves and stuff down there, you know, blocking the radiators, uh, the radiator, kind of blow them out a little bit. I got all those out of there already by hand. Okay, let's get a new one in there. I'll put some new O-rings in there, uh, vacuum it down. I'm gonna use my inverter inside my truck to vacuum it down um, and put it back together the way you took it off and it's not a big deal. So yeah, uh, let's get to the next job in a few minutes. Let's get this done first. one more thing I wanted to mention as far as tools to get the stud out of this is going to be an E7 it's going to be an inverted torque E7 E7 okay put in there you get the stud out of there Install it in this one. Good enough. Let's get that little plastic piece off of there as well. Okay, you just pull it like that. Gonna put it on the same way. Loop it, and stick it on there. Just like that. Ace, don't you go nowhere. We're in a parking garage. Ace, let's go. So I'm gonna put this side in. Actually, I took it out like that. So I'm gonna put it back in like that. Reverse order. You don't have to worry about those clips because with the new one, you should have some new clips for the transmission line. Oh, that, that worked out. That worked out nicely. I'll just stick it back on the clip. Okay. It's clipped in on that side. Flip you around. And this one should go right in there too. Good, locked in. Okay, locked in. Plastic pieces are on there. Yeah, they look good, they look good. All right. That's about it, y'all. Reverse order from here on out. Peace. Let's get to the next job. Some axles on a Toyota Camry. How's the lease? We're working on this uh, Toyota Camry today. I already did the axle on the driver's side. It's just a short axle. On the passenger side, it has a longer axle. And it has a, it has a snap ring on it. That looks something like this. Okay, that looks something like that. So I unlatched it, but I can't get the bearing out of the carrier. So uh, we're gonna use, I don't have a press obviously on my truck. So I'm just gonna heat it up and see if I can beat it out of there and uh, install the new one. And the new one is over here. I already have it separated and the old axle pulled out of there. So we'll be installing this one. Let me show you how to quit. That 
bearing right there and this one has to come out. Let's do it. Let's heat it up. Uh, Alright, let's do the damn thing. She started acting up. coming out a little bit a little bit more there it is that's it let's install the new one one thing I'd like to mention mobile techs if you don't have a a uh, acetylene torch some kind of portable torch uh, you guys got to get one. It's going to save you time. It's going to make you money. It's, it's one of these necessities you got to have in your truck eventually. Uh, you can get this whole thing for uh, 300 bucks, which is nothing because you're going to make that back in the first job or two. It'll be paid for. So it's a good investment. So anyways, we got that out. Now we'll go ahead and uh, install the new one. All right, once you install the new one, there's a groove right there, and there's a groove on the other side right there. You just got to put this, squeeze it, and lock it to the tab so the bearing can't slide out. So that's all I got to do. I'm going to use some channel locks. There we go. There it is. There it is, guys. Kind of, Kind of tap it. Make sure it's in the groove. Inspect it. And that's it. Line that bad boy up in the hole. Take your hammer and you come to the sand. Put, make sure the nut's on it. Make sure it's flush. And it's not flush for me, so I'm going to flush it up a little bit. And you take your hammer and you just pop it and it'll, it'll start itself in the transmission. Alright, we got that in there, guys. You got three bolts. And you got this locking tab that locks into the bearing up there and that's it that is it my brothers all right let's put uh this back in the in the uh rotor and we'll be done or the bearing and we'll be done all right guys that's the end of the day and this is how you'll be looking 50% of the days you're out there in the field, if you're not doing diagnostics, electrical work, you're going to be looking like this. 
So try to keep uh, what I do, I try to keep soap and water, a bucket of soap and water, five gallon bucket in the back of my truck. A little bit of Clorox, a little bit of clothes soap, some, some Tide or Dawn, a Tide, Dawn, and uh, some Gain. Put it in the bucket, keep yourself clean. Uh, yeah, so yeah, I'm done for the day. So that was three jobs. That was three jobs we probably did. I know you guys worried about how much money did you make, A's? I don't really talk like talking about that, but just so you guys can have something to look forward to as long as you keep doing good work and you're not guessing and uh, you, sh you should be able to make uh, I don't know man, you should be able to make some money, alright I did, I did, okay I'm going to say it, I did uh Four, six. I did about 800, maybe nine. I, may, I probably did close to 900, three jobs. Uh, and I did it and uh, I got up at eight o'clock this morning, 7.30. I think I started work around 9.30, six hours, six hours. Okay, so uh, yeah, that's something to look forward to. Just keep doing good work and just be patient. It's, it's gonna come. It's not gonna come overnight. It's not gonna come the first year, the second year, or the third year. Although you will have some good times, some good days in that week. You'll probably do a new guy will probably do you know 100, uh, 200 a day. It'll go down to a 80 a day but you got to just be patient don't get discouraged on these days you don't make hardly any money or no money don't get discouraged you got to stay out there and be seen eight hours a day treat this like a job eight hours a day out in the field being seen get a magnet sticker on your truck guys uh uh pass out flyers uh business cards people in jackson like flyers so i, pa I used to pass out a lot of flyers uh, i don't even give out business cards anymore i don't even give them out anymore i'm busy enough i don't even want to give out any cards anymore so uh, uh what else can i say about that uh yeah it's going to be a journey and you're going to have a lot of, hopefully you have a lot of fun while you're doing it Hopefully you'll have lots of fun while you're doing it. Talking to people, that's the best thing, one of the best things about being a mobile tech. You get a, you get to talk to everyone and it's not like a shop. You can, you know, you gotta stay in the shop. You can't talk to nobody. All the only people you can talk to is the technicians in the shop. You know, they all got the same nasty personality or good personality, whatever. Some techs are funny. A lot of techs are funny actually. But uh yeah, you can talk to customers, you can do your park runs, you can go get you a Coke if you want a break. Go sit down and have a Coke and buy tools. I bought another tool yesterday. This is what I bought yesterday. Always going to buy tools. You're never going to stop buying tools. But I bought this kit yesterday. It's a, I did a, uh, I was working on a F-150. And I had the puller kit, the steering wheel puller kit, but I did not have the kit that had these hooks on it. And for the F-150, you need that hook. So I bought this kit. I got a discount on it. It's one thing about being your own boss and being self-employed entrepreneur, guys, is, you know, people look out for you when, you're, when you do your own stuff and, and you're making money and they know you're making some kind of money. You get discounts and you give people give you shit and <laughs> it's really crazy. So yeah, it's something it's something to look forward to. And and the main objective, you know, regardless of everything, the main objective is why I'm telling you this, is so you guys can be free. Now I can tell you what it feels like to be free, but more than likely not no one is going to understand what I'm talking about. You'll understand once you get that first year 
of self-employment in. You'll, you'll know what freedom really is, or you'll get a taste of it. I know what freedom is, but I even, even now after all these years, there is another, there is another aspect, another aspect of freedom that, that the, it's, it's out there. I feel it. I feel it. There's something else. Uh, I just don't know what it is yet. But uh, when I find out, I'll let you know. But this free, the feeling of freedom is absolutely amazing. You'll never, you'll never punch a clock again, guys. And that's the whole goal. Be self-employed. And when you get, become self-employed and you, you become self-employed, it's your responsibility to teach someone else how to be self-employed. Teach them how to make money because, you know, they don't teach us how to make money in school. They teach us how to get a job. That's what they teach us, how to get a job. They don't teach you how to make money. Making money is actually a skill. Yeah, you know, the, the rich folks understand that. It's a skill. All right, guys, it is the end of the day. So we're just going to do a little talking and uh, I'll tell you how it was for me when I first started a mobile tech, being a mobile tech. Now, mind you that what I am passing on to you guys is we're not going to be stupid like I was stupid. Wait, camera's Camera's dirty. Sorry. You guys are not going to be stupid like I was trying to be the cheapest mechanic and try to get all the work that I can get because I was like a $40 brake job, mobile, ridiculous. I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, so I tell you guys to start out, if you got some experience, five years plus experience or three years plus experience, you might be a super tech. Uh, and you've done some things no don't start no no less than 60 bucks 65 bucks for a mobile call to do a brake job no less than that because otherwise it doesn't pay it doesn't it, it's not going to work for you very well you still got to buy tools you got to buy soap you got to buy gloves you know you got to put gas in your car if you smoke cigarettes you got to buy cigarettes uh you know a lot of things you're gonna have to buy so one one job is already gone you know what i'm saying if you get one job that day it's already gone 60 bucks doesn't take but a second to spend so uh what i wanted to tell you is uh my first year i probably averaged 125 i probably averaged 125 125 dollars for six days of work you know it varies you know it always varies in this field and maybe 125 150 i might have a good week it might be 175 so it jumps around a lot but no less than 125 uh and i gave myself a raise i gave myself a five dollar raise per hour because i was still on the dollar per hour scale back then until i got smart uh, and I gave myself a five dollar raise per labor hour, and which is still valid. You can still do that now, uh, but don't start no less than sixty bucks for a mobile call break job. No less than sixty bucks for a break job. Uh, uh, second year, I probably was doing in the two hundred, one seventy five to two fifty range. Uh, average per day. And the third year got better, and the fourth year got better. Fifth year, fifth year, I figured it out. On the fifth year of business, I figured it out, and I figured out all my mis well, most of my mistakes by the fifth year. And that's why I tell you guys that in five years, you can do what I've done right now i'm going on my 12th year in jackson so what i'm what i'm telling you guys is you can do all this you can be where i'm at have tools you know a dog you know you know doing good work got your reputation built up 
making good money, good money, three to seven hundred dollars a day in five years if you do it smart and, and you don't do any and you don't get a lot of comebacks. You always triple check your work. Triple check your work. You don't want any comebacks. Comebacks. Comebacks is, is just takes money out of your pocket. So you got to take time to go over there, and you got to fix it right the next time. So you don't want any comebacks. Zero comebacks. So that's why you triple check your work, guys. Uh, and if you do that, and you don't get no comebacks, your name is gonna fly. It's gonna, everyone's gonna know you. Well, a lot of people are gonna know you. And uh, that's all I hear nowadays. Hayes do, goes, does good work. Hayes does good work. Yeah, call Hayes, call Hayes, call Hayes. So, yeah, and finally, <laughs> finally, I've been trying to get you guys on my page since I got here. And it took, uh, it actually took about five years uh, for that to really start happening for me after I figured it out. You don't want to be too cheap. You won't, don't want to be too cheap. You want your customers to be grateful that you're there and you fixed it correctly. <clears throat> but you want them, you want them to, you want them to feel it. You want them to feel the fee it took to get that repaired. You want them to feel it. If you're too cheap, they don't respect you. If you're crackhead cheap and you get a job for them, they say, man, I'm gonna charge you again, I'm gonna call you again. They're not gonna call you again. More than likely, they're not gonna call you again. Uh, because you're too damn cheap and they don't respect you for that. So stay at the 60, 65 to start. Build your name up gradually. Boost up your prices gradually. In about five years, you would have gave yourself five raises over them five years. Sorry about that. You would have gave yourself a good five raises. And you will be right where you need to be. You got your tools together. Uh, you're looking good. You're clean. You're not going to be dirty. Well, I'm dirty right now. It's been a long day today. Of course, I did a thousand dollars today too, and it was, I pulled eight. Well, I've I've been moving around, so I'm on my eighth, going on my eighth hour right now, and I'm gonna go do another call right now. And that's one of the things that you're gonna have to do too. You're gonna have to say, man, forget, man. I was gonna go to the movies tonight, or I was gonna go out to dinner, or something. When that phone rings, when you're first starting out this business for yourself. These are things you need to know. You need to get off your butt, get off the couch. Hopefully you're not on the couch and you're already out here in the street to be visible. And you're gonna go and knock out these jobs even if you don't want to do them. Just do them for the first three years. Just be a beast out here and be on call for everybody. The more people you see, the more chances that your name is gonna spread faster and faster on that third year on that third year you want to be you want to be you want to hold a presence in the city or town that you're in that yeah you know he's a worker and he's gonna get out there and fix your car for you you want some kind of presence you don't want them to start saying in three years your phone shouldn't be ringing really that much but it's gonna ring uh, you don't want them to say, uh, you know, you don't pick up the phone. I just, I just called uh, John and Turn right. and uh, he, he don't pick up the phone. You don't want to be like that. Sometimes people call you back after you did a job for them and they done spent $400 on that job and they call you back an hour later. They don't call you back to say, hey, something was wrong. They call you back to see if they're going to pick up the phone and offer you another job. So be aware of that. It's not all negative because you always triple check your work. So you're not worried about picking up the phone. And that's what you want to be like, guys. Anyways, we got to go do a diagnostic real quick and then I'm headed home. So I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Like and subscribe. I may put a little bonus footage in here. I might put a little bonus footage on here on whatever is wrong with this car. Uh, 
but if not, I'll see you next time. Peace out, guys. So much traffic today. Later on, guys. Someone asked me the other day, uh, I use all data guys for my diet, for my schematics, my diagrams. All data is a service that you need. If you're going to be a mobile tech, you need all data or you need Mitchell, ShopKey, something, some kind of service that you get, you know, repair procedures, uh, diagrams, uh, uh, repair information. You need to get it. It doesn't come on your, on any uh, any scan tool that I know of that for free so just know that you're gonna have to pay for that service but don't worry about paying for the service even if you're a new jack pay the service and it's gonna pay for itself automatically you don't even have to worry about it you're gonna have money in the bank pay the service and keep moving on it's gonna make you money it's not gonna take money from you it ain't going to be like a real bill, is what I'm saying. It's going to pay for itself and make you money. All right. There's a couple other things I wanted to talk about, too, as far as uh, billing people. Now, one second. I don't, I don't want to miss my turn. I'll talk to you in a minute. All right. Another tip that I wanted to talk about before I got off this thing is uh, when people, you're talking to people on the phone, and uh, they're like rushing you for you know, how much you charge, how much you charge, how much you charge. Don't let them rush you on for, uh, for them to, sh for you to shoot them a price. 125 bucks, 150 bucks, 100 bucks. Don't do that. You get on your all data and you pull up the labor hours. You punch in a little like 0.5 extra for your mobile call. <coughs> And then you shoot them that prize. Don't be think that you got to rush to give them a prize. You give you figure it out and you give them a prize. That way, okay? It's very important. It's gonna it's gonna save you. Because I can tell you now, you're probably gonna cut your throat a whole hell of a lot in the beginning, especially if you don't have all data or, or some kind of program. You're gonna cut your throat. You're gonna be making a lot less money if you don't have this program to help you out and you're going to learn so much you need it you need all data or something like that just so you can learn you can start reading about how things work and you better yourself so uh yeah put that on the list too get a program get a program all right guys that's about it i'm all talked out i'm tired uh, so I will see you next time, unless I have something else.